two reasons why I've come to Rochdale. Three, maybe. Well, I were in Halifax the other day, and Rochdale's not too far. And uh, the main reasons that I've come here are, number one, because a few people said, whatever you do, don't go to Rochdale. <laughs> so I thought I'd come and have a look. And number two, although I try and avoid the news, you can't get away from it, can you? These last few days, Rochdale in news with this by-election that's coming up. And it really it wound me up a little bit. Now, I don't, I don't want to do politics. I'm not going to do politics. But do you know what wound me up? Is you've got your main sort of uh, candidates. One's being disowned now by the Labour Party. And the other one... You all know what I'm talking about. Just turns up to try and capitalise on anything like that. Turns up like a bad smell. Uh, but you know what's frustrated me? Is that all they're sort of talking about is politics in the Middle East. You know, with the Gaza and Israel situation. Now, I don't have an opinion on that. Because I think sometimes things are too complicated. And I don't know everything about it. And it's all right to not have an opinion either way on certain things. So I'm, I don't get involved with that. But this is a by-election for Rochdale. And all that seems to be discussed with the main candidates is a political situation in the Middle East. That's just ridiculous. You know, Rochdale's got loads of problems. When I've looked online, I've just done a little bit of investigating. It's got crime through the roof. There's a problem with sexual violence and grooming there's been a real issue with that there's what about the town center what about business there's i think they've closed down the maternity unit so people are talking about that needs bringing back but why aren't these i know some other candidates are discussing that but why aren't the main candidates discussing it it just seems wrong it's it's an election for people of rochdale not some other country I mean, are we going to start talking about all world politics in a local by-election? It winds me up. I don't have a political opinion either way, but if I were doing politics, I'd want what's best for town, for everybody in town, not just certain groups. So when this rain lets up, I'm going to have a walk around. I'm going to have a walk around town centre. And like all my videos like this i just tend to do the town center and i know there's other places there's country parks on outskirts but you know when you've got a few hours somewhere there's only so many things you can do i'm gonna have a look at town hall although i think it's closed for renovation everything's closed when i get there but apparently it's one of the nicest town halls in the country i think i'm gonna have to buy a brolly aren't i because this rain ain't gonna let up it's it's not a good start, is it? But we'll not let the rain spoil my opinion of Rochdale Town Centre. It's a nice old building there. First one I've found, I like this street, but it's quite run down. I feel sorry for the uh stall holders today the rain has temporarily stopped so it looks like there's some older buildings over in this direction we'll go and have a look see what they're about So like I said, the, uh, the town hall is currently being renovated and what a magnificent building, gothic, got all lit up inside that. So that's another place we can't go in, <laughs> it's a regular thing this on my channel.
every time I get somewhere it's shut so it's all happening now the rain stops I think we've got more local media somebody having this photograph taken probably a candidate uh, I wonder if he wants to have a chat when he's done I was talking to that guy over there in the orange coat and he's I think he's independent but for a, a sort of local news he must be a candidate then he's getting interviewed I think that's local radio TV whatever you see there's the mischievous part of me that wants to go and stand in the background and wave you know like when you see these outtakes I feel like doing that but I'd have to charge him then, wouldn't I? For having me on. <laughs> 30 beers on tap in there, look. But it's shut, that's not good. Do you know this bit? You've got your college over there in the background. Lots of old bit, oh look, it's Tillet. The old post office. Town all absolutely spectacular. This bit's quite nice. There's a church up there, that looks like it's boarded up as well. Let's go and have a look at the church. No, I bet you can't even get up. Let's go and have a look. Bit of exercise, isn't it? Who's this statue? Gracie Fields, I bet that. I didn't know Gracie Fields was from... Uh, from Rochdale, yeah, there you go. Starting to rain again now. Can't make its mind up. I might have to go into weather spoons. What's that? Another pub. Oh, I think that's the pub. I think that's the old pub. There's a really old pub, White Horse. I think that's it. I hope you haven't got a wide angle lens on there. Yeah. No, it's all right. You're not on. I'll put music over this bit. So I've come in here to get out of the rain, filming myself like an idiot. We're at Pint of White Rail. It's a cracking pub, this. Nice pub. Massive selection of beers. And food looks lovely as well. It's called the Flying Horse. And it's right near Town Hall and Centre. And then I'm gonna have this. Hopefully, it rain will have died down a bit, and I'm gonna head up to the uh, to the church. So although you can't see it, that was a cracking little pub, that the Flying Oaks. Uh, nice beer. I had a pint of white that. And I was talking to a chap who told me that all this was trees here behind here and they've uh, taken them down there was some disease in them and i think the landscaping all this so when it's all done here it's going to be really nice and i can imagine it's summer if you've got some tables and stuff outside it'll be lovely anyway i'm going to go up and have a look at the church so there we have saint chad's and there are the stocks for if you're naughty I just went round the back of the church, I was having a look round and there was a couple of homeless guys there, it's called Steve and Dean and I asked them if they wanted to come on the channel and say something because when I was in Halifax the other day there was uh, the young lad that wanted to speak so I asked those guys but their reaction was no <laughs> no chance and it might not have been a bad thing because they were quite sort of they were angry, I mean and that's understandable isn't it 
they were t I don't know if it's true, but they were telling me that somebody froze to death recently around here, some homeless chap. Uh, so I says, you, you don't want to say anything? And they says, no, but you can tell everyone it's a shit hole and it's just a dumping ground for for wrong -uns. That That were their words, I'm just uh, quoting them. So, but yeah, it's a difficult one. I want to start talking to more people on the channel and it's hard getting finding people that will talk to you. So, hiya. Yeah, it's, it's hard finding people that will talk to you. Uh, and I think that comes with confidence. As I get more confident, I'll, I'll ask more people. But I always ask people if they want to talk. There's not many people around today. So, so we're at the back end of the town hall now. You can see how beautiful it is from the back. I'm just going to have a walk back down into town. And have a better look. There is a museum, I believe. I'm going to try and find that. I think there's a fire museum as well. So I'll have a look on Google to try and find that as well. It's interesting over there. Right, so I mean, this, you, this, what was your name, sorry? Jenny. Jenny was just telling me this is the very first co-op shop. Mm hmm Welcome. Yeah. And what day, what, when was this sort of, what date is it from? So, this is a recreation of how, roughly how it would have looked on opening night which was the 21st of December 1890, 1844. Right. So it's our 180th birthday this year. Oh, wow. Um, and the reason that it's all barrels and planks is because the pioneers had to spend all the money that they'd managed to save up yeah. on renting the place and also on converting it into a shop because it was a wool warehouse. Right, Because okay. they could rent a shop unit, nobody would rent to them. Yeah. Because they were so subversive. Oh, wow. so, and then these are the original kind of products that they sold, very basic, simple products. Um, and the rumour is that they brought them all over from Manchester in a wheelbarrow. Fantastic. <laughs> in December. And, and, and oh gosh, that was a struggle. So we've got three floors here, haven't we? Yes, just, three uh, floors around, all wow. three. Excellent, um, that's very good. Yeah, enjoy. Thank you very much, I'll have a look around. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, that was interesting. This is the uh, this is the modern extension at the side of it. presume that's what kid is to play. I wonder if that is the room downstairs. Well, that was all rather interesting. I was just uh, chatting to the ladies in there, very nice, and they were giving me some more heads up of places to go. Although I'm running out of time now, so uh, I'm gonna head right across town, I think, 
there's a like a fire museum so I'm gonna go and have a look at that in 2019 there was a, a mural competition in Rochdale and that's why there's these murals everywhere which I quite like It's a nice old building there. So this is the end of town where I parked and I really don't like this end of town. It's a bit dodgy to be honest. So I've got to be careful filming, getting some looks. But it's not all negative. As we go back down to the centre, it's a lot nicer down that way. This is all your vape shops, Turkish barbers, pawnbrokers all sorts of strange shops Yeah, so there's no getting away from it. That's not the nicest part of town, is it? It's uh, a little bit depressing to say the least. See you what's interesting, when I was in that co-op museum and I watched that film it was talking about why the co-op was set up because there was the rich and then there was the poor so they set the co-op up as a way to sort of help the poor and now looking at the place now it's like it's just the poor and I don't mean that to be negative but the rich have probably moved out into the more affluent areas of Manchester and Cheshire and places like that but walking around here I see so much poverty it's a very run down place I don't see too much to be optimistic about I've spoke to quite a few people and they've all been lovely and I've spoke to lovely people unfortunately nobody ever wants to come on camera so it's difficult I've spoke to some homeless people and I spoke to some uh, business people here and what it seems is that the the homeless people were sort of had a lot to say about all the sort of new arrivals the asylum seekers saying oh they're just dumping them on us and then the business people were sort of complaining about not necessarily the homeless but they were saying there's a lot of what word did she use uh, well, it was the lady that used the word, she says there's a lot of scruffs. And the council introduced these sort of laws and things like that. And they say they're going to clamp down on it. And then they don't, don't do anything about it. She says there's no punishment and no deterrent. And again, the normal law-abiding people, they're the ones that that will have to suffer. I've had a walk around town centre, I've seen just about all of it. There's another place I'd like to go to, but it's a bit of a distance. So I'm gonna go and get in the van and I'm gonna to drive to it. Hopefully it's open. If it wasn't for the weather spoons there, you'd think that was the weather spoons, wouldn't you? Because it's very much like one. Look at that building up there. That's seen better days, hasn't it? Yeah. 
you see how I love where the spoons. They preserve all these wonderful old buildings. The toilets are even downstairs, that's a first, isn't it? I think where the ladies are, I can't, I can't find the gents. They must be over here somewhere. Well that was very nice in there, in the uh, Weatherspoons, really nice building. And uh, I met a couple of subscribers and I've just been chatting to them. And we've had a right good chat. And now I'm late for the next place I want to go, in fact it might not be open. So, the two chaps who I was talking to outside Weatherspoons, you know who you are. <laughs> so I might have missed the, uh, the fire museum because of you. Shame on you. I'll just have to go and uh, have something to eat instead. So I'm starving, so I've pulled up and I need to knock myself something up to eat. But I'm having a meal with Helen tonight, so it's only light. I've just got some veg and some chicken breast. I want to do chicken breast in the uh, in air fryer. My mum's got me some of these liner things. I don't know if they're to catch fat or whatever. But that's what I'm going to use them. Somebody says to me in one of the comments, they said, your van always looks tidy. And that's because, <laughs> the reason that is, because if you saw behind that side now, everything's just piled up. You've got to be on top of it. When you've got such a small van, everything's chucked underneath, everything's chucked in cupboards. And I've just sort of tied it around for when I'm filming. And it helps that I've got a storage unit as well. So like, because time, uh, time, what am I talking about? Because space is of a premium, a lot of my stuff is stored in my lockup. Oh, that chicken's nice. All I did was season it and spray it with a bit of oil. So I'm just going to eat this. And then we'll talk, talk about Rochdale. Mmm. Anyway, I'm trying a different angle in back at van because when I looked at footage the last time, it weren't a very flattering angle. So I'm just going to give you, mind you, this, this is a bit uncomfortable. I'm going to give you my honest opinion on Rochdale. And that's what people want. So it might upset a few people, and I, I don't mean that because I don't want to upset people, because the Rochdale people that I've met today, all the people I've met, uh, they were lovely, and I've spoken to quite a few people today to try to get a feel of the place. There's such a lot of poverty in Rochdale. There's uh, antisocial beha behaviour, which I've heard a lot about from people. And do you know what? I'll tell you what's become apparent after talking to lots of people today, is that the people of Rochdale deserve better than those at the top, those that are in, in control, the councillors and stuff like that. I'm sure there's some good councillors, but on a whole, the people have been let down. Because a couple of people told me about antisocial behaviour, and they keep threatening to do stuff. They're going to have this law, and they're going to you know, clamp down on it. They never do anything about it. They're not harsh enough on these people. I, there was quite a few there's a lot of homelessness and yet they're building a hilton hotel or they built a hilton hotel apparently they've got people coming from out of town because of this by-election trying to capitalize on the different groups of people these rabble rousers they're coming into town on a saturday and sunday and having rallies with, with loudspeakers and whipping up this sort of them and us type of thing you know what's happening in the middle east is terrible but i'm not educated on the subject enough to have a strong opinion on it and this is a by-election that's coming up in rochdale it's not a by-election in the middle east so i don't know why they're talking about all this international politics you know if you can put that on your manifesto you can put that on your agenda but to have that front and center that's all you're talking about what about the antisocial behaviour? What about hospitals? What about 
facilities for people what about the crime because crime's going out of control in rochdale what about uh, sex attacks and grooming and stuff like that why why doesn't anybody want to talk about that it's because they don't and i think people need to sort of start standing up and, and saying it as it is i don't want to do politics on this channel the thing is, I get passionate, and I see people, and I see lovely people, and I, and I care for all different people, people that are, are good and that they want the best, and then you see the odd riff raff and that that spoil it, and and nobody seems to want to do anything about it. So there. The town hall area was nice. They were, they're obviously regenerating that. But that should have been done ages ago, shouldn't it, really? It's gone from rack to ruin. Parts of that town were so depressing. You've seen on footage. It's like some people don't have any pride in their in their surroundings. And I think if you if you did have a bit of pride in your surroundings and you sort of spruced everything up and really made the effort, that reflects on people's behaviour. You need a community. Anyway, sorry about that rambling. I just, I can't help it. I just speak my truth, really. So that's my verdict to Rochdale. It's not a very positive one. If you've got any suggestions of places you'd like me to go, somewhere that's going to cheer me up. And uh, <laughs> I'm with Ellen anyway, our next two videos. So that should be good. We're hopefully going somewhere in North East. So I'm dead excited about that. Really looking forward to it. Uh, so yeah, check them out. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.